When my parents first asked me to come home, it got me really worried. Mum did have a pretty serious chat with me about what coming back could be potentially about, and especially considering Dad's work. Hi. Reasonable day. We discharged our last, uh, for the moment, positive patient today. So we, we've got a, a hospital without any COVID patients for the first time in, in probably a couple of months. Because they were health workers and because they were putting themselves in the line of fire almost, that I was there to spend time with them just in case something awful happened. Who's starting you? So before the coronavirus came to Tassie, me and my sister had moved out of home. I was living in Hobart with my partner and she was living in Queensland with her partner. It was something that we all wanted to be together at home to do, to get through together. So we came, but we brought our partners. Can someone call Quinn? He's not my boyfriend. <laughs> in isolation, it can be very lonely. And, well, when you have all these extra people in the house, it's not. Imagine if it was just me here and Dad at work the whole time. I'd be crawling up the wall. So my dad was the son of a doctor and a physiotherapist. He met my mum, who trained to be a nurse. And um, I think we all, as children, we went through the same sort of, oh, I'm not going to go into healthcare. But um, everyone except me did. <laughs> so my brother's a physiotherapist. My other brother is a biomedical scientist and is currently in physio. And I'm studying film. It initially felt like Tassie was this little safe island and we were going to be cut off from all of it. So no matter what happened on the mainland, we were going to be OK. But then the breakout on the northwest happened, which ended up closing down the hospital. I thought, this is the beginning of what we've been waiting for. It was like we were all sitting here waiting for the wave to come. Like, it's still scary and I worry about my family, but we, we, we are a medical family and it's, we've always lived with it, so we're just hoping for the best. I came back to support my family and I just kind of felt like, what am I doing? So I decided to make a film out of our family videos. And so I planned this little mystery screening for them as a thank you. So it's almost nine o'clock at night. I'm currently working on the video, the surprise video. And, um, hmm? I didn't know this was a surprise. Didn't you know it was a surprise? No. Have you told someone about it? I think so. It's a surprise. Oh. Lucky I know now. <laughs> As a family, we don't usually do the dawn service. Initially, we thought we were alone on our street and no one else had taken the time to get up. But then when the last post was being played, we heard a bugle coming from one of our neighbors. It's a memory that I think I'll really cherish. We're never going to have another dawn service like that again. After I had made the video, I planned to show it to them in a mystery screening. And so I handed out invitations and I said that you need to be in the lounge room at this time. Mystery screening. And I really wanted to make an event out of it. Mystery screening, eight to nine Sunday. 
Kind of nervous. <laughs> I think I, I did this because I sort of saw you all doing your things as medical professionals, and I thought, well, well, my skills aren't wholly suited to dealing with a health crisis, but um, I wanted to help you and support you, so I made this, and I hope you like it. I think for Anna, it was really funny for her to watch, but for mum and dad, it was something really more than that. It was a really good sort of reflection on what they've built together. Overall, for me and my family, this has turned into a really special time for us. From what was expected to be such an awful time, we've really just been so lucky. And that's why it was so important to have everyone home. So it's been a blessing. <laughs>